We are back with the Guy Dawson Show at the World Center of Broadcast Media, WCOBM.com, and I have been speaking with Meredith Allen of the Meredith Show, and we've been talking about her amazing, phenomenal, and interesting background. I paid him for that. Broadcasting. (laughs) (laughs) And she's just been telling us all these stories about famous people that she uh, has worked with in her past, and and then you got your own show. How did that come about? Well, good question. So... All through the years, I've anchored actually on almost every major network there is. I found that it kind of stinks working for a large corporation. And I don't mean any insult to all the networks because it is a cool experience to go and work for, you know, a huge company that has a a nice budget at times. But there's a lot of pressure there to do what they want to do. So my dream has always been to do my own show. And that was a someday, and I know it would happen, and we were talking a little bit earlier about setting intentions. So the opportunity arose when I launched my marketing company, and this was almost 10 years ago, so a long bit ago, um, to kind of do my own show and create something. And it started with an idea, and I literally hired a young lady to do my um, logo, which is the same logo we use now. Um, She was my assistant. Uh, She worked for me. During her college career, actually, I I brought her on as an intern and uh, we went through several derivatives and then I thought, okay, I'm really going to do this. So I shopped around and uh, the number one, this is really funny fact, you want to talk about humbling. I've worked for every network or every affiliate in every city I've been in and it's either been a number two or a number three station. So people at home who don't know TV wouldn't really know what that means, but the bottom line is. Ratings are how you um, get paid. The higher the ratings, the more money a station makes because they sell the commercials. That's the short way, right? Would you agree to Mm -hmm. describe it? Mm -hmm. So um, being number two or three is okay. And everybody, there's a place for that. But I always wanted to work for number one. So I was in the town of Columbia, South Carolina, and number one was NBC. And I had worked for every network in that market, of course, but NBC. So I thought, that's what I want to have my show on. So I made a connection with somebody um, in the sales division, and I actually bought a slot on NBC with high ratings because <laughs> I knew that the ratings mattered, right? And so I bought the lunchtime hour, and uh, high noon was when my show went on. And we, the, the Meredith Show was born out of uh, amazing fortune of events. I actually had a video production company with my partner, Bill Grant, at the time, and we produced these segments kind of like 60 Minutes. I mean, I grew up in the 2020 60 Minutes era when those shows were the longer format, the interviews that went deep. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, that's kind of how it all came to pass. And then it was amazing. The the ratings went up even higher than we, we had hoped. And I thought, this is a dream come true. And so then my girlfriend said, you need to do radio, too. And I'm like, oh, this TV is a lot of work. And she's like, no, 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 it's so easy to do radio. Ah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So anyway, the truth is you had to, like, book... Um, by the way, I, I'm, I'm saying hello to our Facebook fans. We're broadcasting live there, and I know we're broadcasting live online, so... Lots of channels. Of yeah, we're on WCOBM broadcasting live. We're also broadcasting live on YouTube. Very cool. A lot of opportunities to to watch shows. So pick your channel, right? Yeah, well, you can watch Guy Dawson show everywhere, all over the world. I love that. Don't you love that? It's yeah. so cool. It's now. phenomenal, isn't it? This is yes. the the new wave. This yes, is taking I, the whole platform to. It's to a game changer, level. really. In fact, you know, it's kind of sad. Uh, the world I worked in for most of my life, the ABC News, the NBC, the Fox News, um, many cases, the local stations are dying. The news budgets are shrinking and it's not the same. I don't think I'd ever go back to straight news, actually. Um, I, I, I really I miss working with other people who with a variety of loves like I'm not a sports person But I think it's fun to have a sports guy around, you know, and and all the talk about Vegas getting these teams It would be cool to be the first to find out if the Raiders are really coming by the way Are you a fan? Are you hoping? Were you thinking? What if you the thinking? Raiders are coming or not? Yeah. I think it's a great thing. I, yeah. yeah, I hope I, we keep hearing different stories about Yes, no, maybe. Raiders coming yes. with the financing and everything. But as far as I know right now, it's a go. I think it's a wonder. I'm looking forward to having them come on and do interviews on this show. Absolutely. 
I hope you get the first interview. Oh yeah, well, that's what I, I wish for you. That'd Raiders, be pretty. Players and yes, and their staff. Can and... I be invited when you get the players? I just like to look at their butts. That's as far as I go. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell sure them they, that, please. We'll make don't sure they come in full <laughs> uniform, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just, I just come in. I can be in the background. Uh, no pun intended. No, I'm just kidding. I, well, not really. <laughs> I've met, a, you know, I have a couple of friends who are in media here in Vegas, and they talk about how it's a very competitive industry when you start getting with the networks and really, uh, it's well, this yeah, they, oh yeah. Well, just the the industry, you have a lot of younger people. You get to a certain yes. age where you're not young, and yeah, um, the thing gets, that that they say has kept them going is the connections that they've made. Made, that's making up for the fact that they're not, you know, 26 anymore. Well, this is why people should hire Guy Dawson because he's got connections. I hear here in Vegas, kind of big ones. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, I can keep you in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> he has a TV show uh, slash internet show slash radio show. You got all the shows uh, and the connections. You're you're the good package. No, in all seriousness, I know you don't typically get interviewed in your business, but how did you wind up in communications? Period. It was just, uh, I went through a series of personal development things. And, I, you know, I've been in business since I was a kid. And I always got in things and I never had the right connect. It was never exactly what I really felt like I needed to do. But I went through a personal development seminar and I was sitting in a room and a man started talking about, most of you aren't doing what you're best at in your life. And he said, you're doing it so naturally that you don't even know you could be making a living from doing it because you have synapses in your brain that are wired that you've created throughout your life that allow you to be more talented and effective at certain things. And I had never heard it quite phrased that way before when he said that. And I started thinking about, he says, there, whatever you did when you were 12 or 13 years old and you were really good at, that's what you should be doing for a living. Mm, isn't that the truth? And I so it made me start to think back, what was I doing? I was always into speaking, journalism, so the culmination in business. So the culmination of that was a PR and advertising company. Boom, classy and the, communications and that was born. Was, and that was before I was doing broadcasting at all. But wow. that's, that's what caused that. And isn't it interesting, do, would you or would you not say the universe aligns once you set your sights on where you're meant to be, you're in your purpose when you step in? Right. Well, I had to step out and do the personal development. I had to try to find out what my purpose was. Yes. you have, I, I find that with a lot of people, most people just don't really know what their purpose is. They have no idea. Most people go through their whole lives without realizing or ever, and even if they realize it, fulfilling it is a whole nother story. Absolutely, they're afraid. There are a million reasons why people at home don't quit their day jobs. I mean, mm -hmm. it's there's some security in knowing when the paycheck comes in, but there's some magic, and I'm sure you would agree, when you take that leap. There's some magic, it's scary, and it's definitely not easy. I'm sorry, anybody who goes right. into business to think that they're just gonna cruise off into a fluffy, happy, far away, delightful land where everything is going to flow towards you is a dreamer yeah. but if you're willing to work for it and even when it gets tough work through it because you have a purpose like you said i totally agree you know as you were talking you know who you remind me of who les brown oh wow well, yeah i've interviewed him actually oh my no you have he was on my radio show on a this show oh, no, I was he say, hasn't been I'm on like, this he show he didn't sit in his chair yeah. did he now we have did skype he? So uh -huh. that's what I'm, uh, oh. people can just Skype in and be a part of. But I, I did nice. interview Les a few years ago on the oh radio. Oh my goodness, he I He was love a great him. guy. He got on at first. He was very, you know, he was, oh, who is this guy? Right. And I was interviewing him. But when you get him going, I mean. Yes. Well, <laughs> he talks about what just what you're saying, that that, that people, I, I'm, a, I'm a nerd and I also like personal development. In fact, I spend every morning trying to listen to different YouTubes and I've been going through a Les Brown phase. And for people at home who don't know who he is, I mean, he's one of the highest paid motivational speakers, I would say, in the country right about now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bottom line is, is that he believes, just like you were saying, that people walk around and, and they, they might think they should be doing something else, but they just don't have a clue. They don't mm -hmm. step into it or have the courage. But I commend you for taking that leap because I think most people do not. And it's kind of sad. So I hope we're here inspiring people at home to yeah, say, Yeah, really, I, you it. know, I would say think back to what you were good at when you were young. And 
what happens, I think, is when you get on your purpose, like you were saying a few minutes ago, is yes, it is hard, but it's hard working for someone else yes. and accepting what they give you. And there are limiters there. I mean, there's only so much you're going to get in your annual raise. And what right. if there isn't a raise? And if you're on purpose, you work through it. You just, what, no matter how hard it is, you won't quit because that's what you would do for free. You yes. know how they talk about how you could do certain things in life for free? Yes. If you're on purpose, because you, you you'll never quit. That's what I discovered. I mean, nine years almost in business, I've had a lot, and I'm sure you have uh, a lot of times, dark days. Oh, yes. <laughs> business, oh, business mm -hmm. is not, you have probably more dark days than light days. But be, because you have that purpose, you know why you're doing it, it, there's just no way that you can quit. Failure is not an option. In fact, I don't mind failing. Bring on the failure. The more I fail, is the more room for me to learn, grow, and succeed. And you're getting closer. We're always getting closer. And you know what? I'm never going to say I'm there yet. It's just when I think that I'm at the top, there's going to be a new mountain out there to climb, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I look at it. So tell us about marketing. You were touching on, <sighs> you started a marketing business about yes. 10 years ago. So, so yes. What inspired you to do that? Well, I, my friends, actually. The truth of the matter is, is that I was always a broadcaster who loved helping people with their press releases whose friends always came to me. I mean, my, my friends would just say like, please help me with a press kit or do you know how I could get on and get an interview? Okay, I got the interview, Meredith. Now, how, what do I do when I get there? <laughs> you know, how do you show up and prepare for an opportunity like this if you're not a seasoned broadcaster? Uh, and so I just gave away as much as I could. I helped my friends as much as possible. And then about, I think it was exactly eight years ago, I had uh, a friend say to me, you know, I want to pay you. Please let me pay you. And I'm like, ah. Oh. And they're like, no, really? This is really helping me grow my company. And so I thought, wow, maybe it's time I come become legit and open a company. And uh, I will never forget doing the paperwork. It was like a huge deal for me because, you know, my family, everybody was very supportive, but they didn't really... Um, I didn't come from a family of entrepreneurs. In fact, my father didn't even go, to, he dropped out of high school. There was some poverty in, in uh, his childhood and there was a need and they, they had a large family and he, he dropped out of high school, went into the Marines to send his check back home. So, so I feel very privileged that I was able to go to college um, and that you know I, I recognize that in marketing, you're really storytelling. If you're really good, you find out no matter what the product or service, the story behind the business, and that's where the magic is. That's how you get people's attention. That's how you share your passion because anybody could have a widget, right? But if the, if the widget, it doesn't matter how cool the widget is, if nobody knows about the widget or the story behind the widget or how the widget works, they don't care. So I just found a lot of power in that. And when I say power, I mean power to help. Like I really believe and just like what you do every day, Guy, because we're really in alignment and we do some crossover work, I think, you know, the, the bottom line is everybody wants to grow. Uh, at least I would think they would want to grow if they have a company, right? And what, what surges sales? Your publicity, your PR, my marketing, um, that mindset that to do something creative and different and, and make sure you're known, right? So that's kind of why I like spending time with you because that's a good energy that we share. Yeah, I, I love what you were talking about when it really is about stories. Human beings are just naturally attracted to stories. I think it's, they sit you on your lap when you're little, you sit on your father's lap or your grandfather's lap and people tell you stories. We are really conditioned throughout our lifetimes to be connected with stories. That's what all the movies, TV shows, the news, everything in our lives, it's all about stories. And you're absolutely right. Public relations and marketing is just telling a story and, and presenting it to people in a way that it's interesting and it makes them want to value your product or your service. I'm going to tell you a story that I think would make people at home smile. A little over a year ago, I had a tragic event and I decided I was going to leave behind South Carolina. I was going to hop in my car, drive across country, and then I wound up in lovely Las Vegas because mom and dad are here. I didn't think I was going to stay. I actually just came to help them out. I decided to stay because I'm close with mom and dad and I felt like they needed me. And when I made that decision to stay, I wound up getting a brand new client, very good fortune and luck, who sent me for the first time, like you were talking about, to professional development. And it was there that I wound up suddenly, fast forward a few months later, in a global mastermind. 
And it was that global mastermind that introduced me to Don Laner, and Don Laner introduced me to you. And I believe it is no mistake that we are sitting here today, Guy Dawson. I just feel like things are exactly as they are. Have you ever heard of the Hicks? Um, they are, um, they're sort of like people who talk, they're the inventors of this book called The Secret. Oh, Jerry, Jerry and Esther Hicks? Yes. Oh, Abraham? Oh. Uh-huh. So along with Les Brown, I'm really caught up in that, that law of attraction, that, that thing that, you know, you're putting out good energy and Don's putting out good energy and you've joined forces and people want to be a part of that. And naturally, when I met Don, I knew I was going to like you. So, you know, we, it's amazing when you put out good energy and you're doing good things and you're positive. I think the thing, the nice thing about our buddy Don and, and yourself is your givers. You are not out there just to take care of your needs. You're there to serve. You have a purpose like we were talking about. Uh, so I think the cool story is, you know, you might think you're just going on a trip cross country with your dog, but you might wind up in a whole new city with a bunch of amazing opportunities that you never dreamt of, but are exactly mm -hmm. where you're destined and meant to be. Do you mm -hmm. believe in that? I do believe in that, and I think that it's really important that if there's something, no matter how outrageous it could be, uh, and you think that it's an impossibility that it could ever happen, you need to think about it anyway. Mm -hmm. Even if, if it's, it's something that you just think, I'll never have the money, I'll never have the influence, I'm not talented, you know, all these, these negative thoughts that come through your head. Even though you might have those thoughts, I would say, think about it. Because that's where it all starts. It, it all starts, starts with your, the fact that yes. you are thinking about it. You'd be amazed yes. at how your thinking about it can overcome all those doubts and it can manifest in your life. I totally agree because the reverse of that is completely unacceptable. You think about how you're broke. I'm always broke. Mm -hmm. I need money. I'm broke. Then you're stuck in a broke cycle. What you th want to think about is what do I have that I can give? What can I do that makes a difference? And the money, I promise you, will come. Yeah. You can be broke and just think of, look at a picture of the beach yes. that you want to go. If you want to go to Fiji and you don't have any money, well, okay, right now you don't have any money. Buy yourself some Fiji water every day. <laughs> ah, right. I tell you, that subconscious that, that's subconscious is not Yes, it's intentional. That's right. Surround Do something, yourself. even though you don't have a lot of money right now, to start getting yourself in the frame of mind. I'm a, I'm a really big believer in intention. And this whole show was created. It's a, it's a long story. I'll have to tell you you one day about it and I don't know if I've told you the story about how but no. it was a completely intentional it was completely it was I, I put it out there and there were a lot of circumstances that should have killed it mm. to where it never would have happened but because I, I believed I kept believing I said when it collapsed there was another opportunity that I had to take this show to another network mm. everything was set the pieces were all in place for me to get started and it just fell apart at the last minute well you know what? Things fall apart all the time. But I believe that's for a reason, too, because mm -hmm. other things are coming. Would you say that's what happened? That's what happened. I just kept thinking, huh, this really is odd. But I, I always knew that it would be okay. I mean, I... And most people freak like, out and they yeah. go get a job. And that's the mistake. I know that that's a crazy thing my dad's watching, by the way. <laughs> He's a big fan of having benefits and yeah. a J-O-B that's most reliable. People. But, you know, and he jokes that I'm a dreamer. But, you know, I think the dreamers... You know, if you never give up, they, in the end, are the ones who are having fun, enjoying life in their purpose. It might not be their whole lives because getting there isn't easy. I hate it when people say it's so easy. Doesn't that irritate you? Oh, to, to be successful? Yes. It's yeah, not easy. It's, it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, it is. It's and you trial have a and lot fire. of faith. Yes. You have I'll, to have a lot of faith in yourself. Yes. And for me, I have a higher power that I have a lot of faith in. And um, it's, it's a lot of it's faith, though. You yes. just have to believe that there's no way that, that you were given this whatever it was oh we're getting thumbs up your... somebody else believes in our faith we've got yeah. a lot of viewers wow this is pretty cool yeah. I, I i i've only seen the facebook one so you have viewers on youtube right now online and then later you share your we've show we've really right? expanded uh, things here at the world center of broadcast media i've been broadcasting here for two years wow and we have, we have it's really grown the way that social media and video has expanded over these couple of years it's amazing i mean the first time i ever saw this studio i knew that this was the future and it's wonderful we have a great staff like scott and other people who are 
are making the magic happen. And the show's almost over, but can you plug your business really quickly? And of course, oh, you're coming back. I'm, well, I'm, you're uh, so sweet. I'm very, very excited about being on the radio show and being here today. But uh, when when people don't catch me on your show, <laughs> it's pretty easy to find me. Um, I'm Meredith at themeredithshow.com for an email, or people can log on to themeredithshow.com to see a little bit about what marketing magic I'm up to. That's my favorite thing, sharing, sprinkling a little marketing mag magic wherever I go if I can. <laughs> Wasn't it very interesting to learn about Meredith Allen's background in broadcasting? And I appreciate you, Meredith. And like I said, I look forward. I know there are a lot more stories for you and I to tell. I can't wait. Thank you so much for having me, Guy. Uh, and thank all of you for tuning into this week's edition of The Guy Dawson Show. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you next week.